in the mountains of Pakistan lives a cat so elusive that it's rarely been filmed. Until 2004, when the BBC Planet Earth series showed the world the first images of a wild snow leopard hunting. For the men who filmed this shot, it marked the beginning of a love affair with the snow leopard. I just looked straight into her eyes and she just caught mine. And I think that was, you know, love at first sight. Driven by this newfound passion, the two men returned, determined to get to know this almost mythical beast, this icon of the wilderness. Covered went far deeper than they had ever expected, to the very heart of the cat's battle for survival. The leopard jumped out, she fell down, he fainted, and the leopard took off. He's saying that if the leopard comes back, I'll just have to shoot it. This is the first film to go beyond the myth and tell the snow leopard's real story. Unlike most people who go in search of endangered animals, Nisar Malik is not a biologist or a wildlife cameraman. Nisar is a journalist, and he's gained an intimate knowledge of these mountains and their people by working here for 20 years with foreign news crews. Most of the news stories I was covering at that time related to Afghanistan and the tribal areas of Pakistan, the children of war, the front line between the Taliban and the Northern Alliance, and a lot of the opium and heroin trade that was taking place at that time. Nisar is now returning to Northern Pakistan for one of the biggest challenges of his life, to build on the tantalizing snow leopard material he helped capture for planet Earth. This quest has brought him to the mountains of Chitral, part of the giant Himalayan range that stretches all the way to China. No one knows how many snow leopards remain here. The cats are so rare and the terrain so challenging that many fear they will become extinct before anyone finds a way to count them. In winter, Chitral is cut off from the rest of the world by heavy snowfalls and rarely visited by outsiders. Accompanying Nisar is expert cameraman Mark Smith. Together, they plan to spend at least a year in pursuit of their dream, which means spending Christmas away from home. Uh, I guess snow leopards is about the only thing that would make you come out. The thought that maybe just up there there is still a snow leopard, and you might just film it. So yeah, I guess it's the biggest draw you could possibly ever want. Christmas morning and Nisar prepares an unconventional meal. And rather than just sitting around looking at the snow and the rest of it, I thought, have a big pumping breakfast today. Because I've got testicles in it. It's got a heart, liver, and, um, and kidneys. Great. Mm. Slightly hungover. That's not probably the most exciting thing. The one beans? No. So little is known about these isolated valleys that the team's best chance of sighting a leopard is simply to cover as much ground as possible. Fresh snowfall covers all animal prints, making tracking difficult, but it does transform the valley into a fairy tale landscape. As soon as it starts snowing and as soon as it starts looking like this, it just becomes a completely magical place. What the team does discover is a haven for wildlife. Markor are extremely rare mountain goats, but they seem abundant here. This is an encouraging sign, as Markor are prime prey.
After weeks of searching, there's no sign of the elusive cat, and as the snows get heavier, animals start to move down to the lower slopes. The animals are struggling. We can't get around much. I think it's time to be to retreat. Get out of here. They need to find a place where a leopard will come to them. But guessing the best location for a stakeout is almost as hard as finding a leopard. Nissar's news gathering skills will be needed. His local contacts may provide a lead. So he is, if you tell the snow leopard that you are king of the jungle, he takes a step back and lets it go through. As usual, plenty of stories, but nothing helpful. Finally, they get a tip-off. A snow leopard has been seen coming close to a nearby village. I just hope it's there when we get there. That's because it's can't go. <laughs> Having spent weeks searching Pakistan's wildest frontiers, could the team really succeed in a place so accessible to humans? For once, there is truth in the rumors. Holy <laughs> shit. The snow leopard is not only here, but out in full view. It's just the most fabulous, fabulous feeling ever. Right in front of us is one of the most elusive creatures in the world looking straight at us right now. Oh, here we go. Hello. For years, scientists and filmmakers have tried to get close to the snow leopard and failed. But now, here was a snow leopard venturing into our world. No longer the stuff of myth and legend, but a living, breathing animal. Day after day, Mark is able to film this consummate mountaineer, a creature utterly at home on these perilous slopes. Her markings provide superb camouflage, whilst her giant paws and immense tail lend balance to some very precarious maneuvers. A wild snow leopard, relaxed in the presence of humans, is completely unheard of. Why should an animal accustomed to roaming hundreds of miles keep returning to the same spot? Before Mark and Nissa can find the answer, she disappears. A few days later, Nisar gets worrying news from the local village. We've uh, just got reports that a sheep herder out here uh, had about 18 of his sheep and goat attacked by apparently an old leopard. And uh, we're just going up to have a chat with them and see if there's any truth to the matter. Perhaps the chance of an easy meal had lured the female leopard into the heart of the settlement. He's saying when you get wounds like this, it's only the, the leopard that does that. And it's got very sharp incisions. But I'm still surprised it's so close to the population. I, I thought it must have been while well, they were grazing up on the mountains. <laughs> <laughs> 